I think this news is, is, is really disappointing and bad news for passengers. So they're going to be the ones who bear the brunt of this. They'll be the ones who'll be impacted. I mean, when you're traveling by rail, what you want is a reliable service. You need to know that you can, can rely on it, that it's going to get you to where you want to go. So for passengers, this is really disappointing. And I think the thing to think about is that the rail industry was just sort of picking up, growing in confidence after the pandemic. It's been a really difficult, turbulent time. Passenger numbers were getting back up there. So this is damaging, not just in the short term for passengers right now, for who, who it's going to be hugely inconvenient, but in the long term, in terms of that confidence and rebuilding rail. Okay, and um, obviously, you know, it, we've had a couple of days to sort of, uh, you know, assess it and, and, and look at what might happen. So what kind of disruption, if these strikes do go ahead, um, could it cause? We're expecting the impact to be severe. So it's still difficult at these fairly early stages to understand exactly which services will run and which services won't run. But I think what we know is that the three strike days are likely to be very badly affected. It covers, you know, a huge range of different staff across many train operators and network rail. But what we also know is that the days either side of those strikes are likely to be impacted as well because, you know, um, the, the, the effect will be knock on and widespread. So passengers really need to know that the whole of that week could be pretty difficult. And I, I think for train operators, they're trying to get the message out that the strikes on and that journeys will be disrupted. As they get more clarity themselves, we need to see them passing that on to passengers and really showing people what journeys will go ahead, what journeys won't go ahead, and importantly, what will happen to tickets. Okay, so what's your um, advice to, to passengers at, at the moment? What can they do to prepare for, for these strikes? Uh, and you know, what should they be looking out for? Well, everyone's going to have to make their own decision, aren't they, about whether to travel by rail in that week. If you've got an essential journey to make, it's going to be a very difficult decision for you, isn't it? You're going to have to look, you know, based on the information that's available at the time. But actually, you know, I've got an essential journey to make myself, a long journey from north of Manchester to south of London on the 22nd and 23rd of June. And I'm going to drive because rail does not look like it's a reliable option for me. So passengers are going to be looking, they're going to be saying, is my train running? If I buy a ticket now, will I get the money back if the journey doesn't go ahead? Can I be sure that the train company is going to get me to where I need to go? So passengers should check, check, check again, check nearer the date. And obviously there's still a little bit of time before these strikes, you know, um, talks are apparently going to continue what what would be your message to the rmt uh, at the moment uh, ahead of the strikes and um, we'd like to see all the parties back around the table carrying on talking it, it is early days even the announcement of strikes has caused kind of uh, upset unrest uncertainty we would like to see all the parties talking and trying to reach a conclusion that means that passengers can carry on traveling with confidence and um, you mentioned a good point earlier about um, which I was going to come on to uh, about the um, about the, the long term impacts. Just tell us a little bit more about that. Obviously, like, like you said, you know, the railways were just starting to get back back to some kind of normal. The, the government and the operators were trying to encourage people back onto the railways. What what kind of effect is is this news going to have on all that work? So, I mean, during the pandemic, we know, of course, there were messages about not travelling and the railway carried on offering essential services, but for very, very few passengers. So that was a really difficult time. Passengers have started to come back. And in fact, I think that um, numbers are around 80 to 90 percent of what they were pre-pandemic. So seeing really good growth back there and particularly in the leisure market. So to me, the impact here is on passenger confidence. For there to be a successful railway, we need passengers to be travelling, don't we? Whether that's making more journeys or new passengers coming and being attracted to the railway. So anything that impacts on reliability and makes, you know, travelling by train less attractive is going to have a long term impact on the ability of the railway to, you know, rebound and be successful.